Okay guys, today we will be recreating some of the basic effects in the Heineken beer label. Uh, again, I just go to Google and type in Heineken logo uh, and just go to high res. I'll get you guys that link in the uh, in the bottom there. So if I go to the high res version, do this. Oh, it actually saves me a file, which is great. It saves right to my computer. I will get that link for you. I'll take that. And I'm just going to drag that into there for now, and I'll upload that in a bit. All right, so now we're going to go and open up. Oops, there's my other tutorial. We're going to open up Adobe Illustrator. We're going to create a new full file. And I'll start with a portrait, eight and a half by 11, no bleeds. And we'll call this Heineken logo retrace. Don't forget to save off, and I forgot to say that in my last tutorial. So we've got a new blank canvas here, or artboard. I'm gonna go to my downloads folder. And we'll just go to our most recent. I always like to look through date modified because then I can actually see my most recent uploads or downloads or fonts or whatever. Place that in and scale that down a little bit. That's a nice high res image. Again, the, the point of this is when you have a low res image, this is kind of nice and high res, but when you get a low res image, a lot of times you have to rebuild what the customer supplies you. So some really helpful things here. Again, don't look at lines, look at shapes. Uh, double click your layer, call this scan or original or both. And lock and dim. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is first off, show you guys how, oops, let's make a, a new layer. Drawing. Let's create a star. Okay, I'll show you guys how easy it is to make a star. So you just go into the ellipse tool, whatever tool's up there. You're gonna go into the star tool, and you're gonna make a star. Now, if it comes out where your star is kind of bowed out, you can hold down Option. Option on your keyboard will, Option and Shift will actually constrain it. Okay, so that's how you make a star. If you wanna make a multi-point star, you just click once on your screen, you have to make a actually make a 15 point star if you want. So you can make a star burst or whatever. Okay, so clicking once on your screen is going to give you some options. But if I'm just making a basic five point star, I'll go back to that. Just complete. I can click and drag and hold shift and option. And that should give me something like that. Again, I like to trace with no fills. I'm scaling down with this tool here, the scale tool. I hit S on my keyboard for a shortcut there. And also hold shift when you're scaling down. Right? You always want to make sure you maintain proportions. Just nudging it into place. Okay, so the star is real easy. Next I'm going to show you guys the actual type on a path. Now, type on a path in Illustrator, it's uh, really useful for logo design rebuilding. I'm going to download the font first so I'm going to go to my fonts folder and I'll try to get you guys this link for the font. Um, it's a TTF file, true type font. We're going to install that. If you download it, it will go to your download folder. Double click and install, and it takes a couple seconds, but it should be loaded into your system. So now, if I type in a word, Heineken, I use shortcuts to size that up, but you guys can use your character palette window type character, or Command T, or Command Shift. 
call them the Pac-Man keys. They're, they're little brackety keys so you can size up your fonts on the fly, which is really handy. Again, if you're just beginning, that might be might be a ways away from remembering that, but that's okay. Okay, and so you got Heineken. Now I'm going to actually go to the Heineken font. There it is. Now that's for the main type here. So let's just that that's really nice okay now they don't actually use that Heineken font or there's a different font for the top and I'm going to show you what that is it's like a sans serif font um, but anytime you're creating type on a path I'm just gonna go option shift and I'm gonna create a circle that sits along the base of that Sometimes I'll bring it over to the side or build right on top, whatever you're feeling comfortable with. We'll make a duplicate. All right, that's handy. And then you can go to your type tool. Now, if you saw what I just did, that was an accident, kind of on purpose. Um, you have to go to your type on a path tool, okay? Type on a path lets you type on a path. So, go into caps lock, whoa, that's really big. Size that down on the fly. Burr, 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 burr. Heineken, Pilsner. Now don't worry about positioning for now or type. So what it does by default is it does a left alignment and you can see up here. <laughs> so I'm actually going to center align that. Okay, align center. And by default, what Illustrator does is it flips it down to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that around, and that does that. Now, we're using a sans serif font for the top. So I'll go to Helvetica for this. Good old Helvetica. It's not exact, but for this exercise, you guys can just use any sans serif condensed font on the top. Now I'm adjusting my kerning on the fly, and you guys can see that inside of here, or tracking. A lot of you guys will call it tracking. I, I call it kerning. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Okay, so that was easy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is instead of, you know, retyping that or resetting a type on a path, I'm actually going to copy, edit, copy, edit, paste. I'm going to take that same shape here. Now I know that the font size should be 48 point because the top one was 48. So that's something to remember, 48 point. And whatever size you guys are working in, it's rel relative to the size of the scan in the layer. So don't worry if yours is a 48, if yours is 24, whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as it's all relative. I just want to make sure that the top font size matches the bottom. Pretty sure that they're the same size. Position's a little different. Now here's where Illustrator type on a path is a little bit tricky. You see when I bring my cursor over top, I get that little arrow. Now, when you get that arrow, you can grab that eye beam, eye bar, whatever that's called, you can flip that to the inside of the type. Okay. Now don't do this. For that bottom type block, don't go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp. I see a lot of people do that. They'll go like this, and they'll kind of fake it. But that's not really how you do that. Okay, you're just bending the type, so don't do that. Do this. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that over. And if you notice, the shaping of that is off. So I'm going to go to my Scale tool. Remember, the size of my original font was 48. Scale that up so that the bottom shape matches how that type sits. Okay, 
so I'm looking more at the arc of the circle than the actual type itself. I'm just nudging with the little arrow keys. So that looks pretty good. Now if I go back to 48, that might match up. Okay, so I can rotate now, load R on my keyboard or the rotate tool, or you might be in bounding box mode, bounding box, sorry. And now you can retype your uh, type. So we'll just go over here and type in premium quality. Whoops. Type is important. All right. Make sure you don't have any typos. Premium quality. All right, there you go. And I'm going to open up my kerning a little bit. Pretty good, okay? All right, so next video I'm gonna show you how to create these shapes and I'll let you guys figure out this little traditional receipt and a trademark on your own and we'll do that little R mark. So we'll stop the video there and take it over in part two. Thank you.